So my question actually has to go along with what you were talking about at the start of the show with truth. And um, my professor put out some reading materials, and as I was reading, I came across this these few sentences on truth, and I wanted okay. to read it to you and sure. hear how you would respond. All right. So it begins, um, many people think truth means what I believe, but if that were the case, it would be a useless concept subject to whim, tradition, and force. Truth, like length, is abstract. An example, it exists only as an idea, as opposed to something concrete that exists as matter or energy. It is a measurement of the accuracy of descriptive statement. So I what was, was the last read? Wait, uh, it's a measurement of the accuracy of descriptive statements? Yes. Okay, good. I got it. Okay, is that and it? And that's where it ends, yes. Okay, well... Um, I agree. I agree entirely with what he said. This is truth is a measurement of descriptive statements, in measuring whether they are so or not, or actually what. Actually, truth isn't a. I guess I could pick at the words a little bit here. Truth is not a measurement of descriptive statements. It is a. It is a. Oh. I'm looking for just the right word here, and maybe it won't come to me. But I, I guess I could live with measurement. But it, what it is is it's an assessment. It's a, it, that something is true is an assessment of a descriptive statement. All right? And um, when we say it's not true, it's also an assessment to the negative. All right? That, but here's the concern I have a little bit um, is I'm not sure the point that he's trying to make. Because what I did is I offered the definition of truth a little bit earlier, and I talked around that issue uh, quite a bit. And, um, and then I showed how that functions for us in the world. It serves to help identify facts about the world, even facts about the physical world. So there can be truths about the physical world and truths about the non-physical world. But as I characterize truth, and even as he's doing it as a measurement or assessment of district descriptive statements, then the, <laughs> the, the 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 status, the ontological status, the 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 nature of the existence of truth is an abstract. It is not a concrete. If what concrete means is something physical, it can be truth abstract accurate claims about physical things. It could be abstract claims about non-physical things. I mean, you could have abstract truth claims about abstracts, and they could still be true. And that's why I'm a little mystified by this. This seems to be a kind of dismissal um, when he says, well, what people say truth is what I believe. Well, if pe You know who says that? Relativists say that. that that's the whole gender thing. What is the truth of your gender? Whatever I believe. I'm not sure if this professor was meaning to take that on when he made this point, but he is essentially denying that truth is relativistic, that it simply is a matter of what your beliefs are. Um, uh, it, it sounds to be that's what he's trying to say. He's trying to zero in on it, but I, I, I'm not sure if he's trying to, if he thinks he's dismissing non-physical non or claims about non-physical realities as being true. Because it's, mm -hmm. is he saying that only concrete things can be real? And truth, that's just an abstract and it's not concrete, it's not physical. I, I'm not exactly sure what he's trying to accomplish here. But so far, what you've read, I've agreed with it all. Yeah. The part where I get confused at is when he gives the example of that truth exists purely as an idea. It's not like matter or energy where we see it physically or we can see the use of it in a physical sense. 
sure. It only well, exists as an idea. Well, when you say when when he says only as an idea, I'm not sure why that's helpful. It does exist as an idea. Therefore, it is an existent. It is something that does exist. Now, the nature of 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 truth is that it's non-physical, though it's referring to physical things. The be beliefs are not physical. Beliefs are are abstract in some sense. Now, they are about things that might be physical, but a belief is a mental attitude in which you hold something to be so. That's what a belief is. Well, that's not physical. That's not concrete. All right. It's 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 so what? <laughs> I don't I don't know what that gets anybody. All right. If he's trying to suggest that there are two levels of reality, there are concrete real things and then other things that aren't so real. They are kind of abstract and they're only ideas so they're not quite real. Well, realness is not a is not a degreed property. It isn't you get like 50% of realness or 75% of realness. It, it's like pregnancy. You're either pregnant or not. You know, it's 100% one or the other. So again, I don't know what he's trying to accomplish by characterizing truth as an idea. I mean, ideas are real. The, I, the idea guy was, uh, was Plato. And he never doubted the reality of the forms those were real but they were not physical in fact his sense if if i i'm i'm not you know i don't go i'm not a plato guy but my understanding is that he thought the forms were the most that was where reality was grounded okay what we see is not it's just a these are the shadows this is the shadow lands we live in yeah, uh, and they are they are not things as they are in themselves, but the platonic forms were was where reality was. So I don't I don't I don't know how it, it, I don't have any difficulty, Sam, with his. It, I mean, in what you've characterized so far of his view, I don't have any difficulty of it. And if he said, yeah, well, it's just it's just an idea. Well, it is an idea, but I don't know what the what the just does for you. So what? Okay, truth is an idea. Bel beliefs are abstracts. They're non-physical realities. Um, and uh, even, I mean, uh, the, the world is filled, it's populated, the immaterial world, with all kinds of things that are not physical. And, uh, and we have access to them. Math is not physical. You could say math is just an idea if you want to. But it's not physical. But it certainly manifests itself overlays the physical universe the universe physical universe responds in a certain way to the reality of the immaterial math that stands behind it and uh this is um i mean so i don't i don't again i'm i'm still mystified by what your professor thinks he gets from this am i missing something yeah that's where i'm a little confused too because I've just been trying to think it over, but it seems like he categorizes two different kinds of truth, but he's not using truth to relate to, like, we know matter exists. It seems like he's distinguishing between, like, E equals MC squared is true objectively, but when it, it seems like he's defining truth as our subjective ideas that we come up with, our worldview, what encompasses our ideas, as opposed to gravity, you know, accelerates objects down to the earth. We have sure. equations that we can predict certain times and events of sure. the cosmos. Well, you know what? There, what might be lurking in the shadows here is a, is a kind of verificationism. Now, this may be a fancy two-bit word. I get to use them because I spent a lot of money to get my master's degree in philosophy so verificationism but this was the idea that uh, that a claim was not meaningful it was not even meaningful if it could not be verified through the scientific method or something like that so to say god exists isn't false it's meaningless on the verificationist view okay the problem with verificationism and this seems to be what he's talking about well i can verify gravity 
I can verify equally E equal MC squared. But of course, what's really curious about that is that's all math. <laughs> and math ain't physical, right? But and yet, and math doesn't respond to the scientific method. The scientific method requires math to work. So math precedes the scientific method. But nevertheless, it sounds like what he's simply saying is all of your beliefs about these immaterial things cannot be verified scientifically, and therefore they can't be called truths. All right. Now, um, uh, it, what the reason it's kind of a chuckle is there are very few verificationists anymore. And the reason is, is verificationism does not satisfy its own requirement. So the claim that truth right. is only truth and meaningful if it can be scientifically verified itself cannot be scientifically verified. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, there does seem to be a whole bunch of, of things that are true that we know that aren't scientifically verifiable, even in principle. So, um, I mean, my awareness that I exist is not something that you can scientifically assess. You can't assess my awareness. My awareness of the world is first person private. All right. And that's why if you want to know what I'm thinking, you have to ask me. Okay. But, but, the, but I know what I'm thinking and I know that my thoughts are true. I mean, let me back up. I know that my thoughts about what I'm thinking are true thoughts. Okay. That is, I can't be mistaken yeah. about what I'm thinking. Oh, I think I was thinking about pizza for dinner tonight, but maybe I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about something else. No, no, your, your own thoughts, you, you, you have incorrigible access to your own thoughts. Let's put it that way. There are, and, but no one else has access like that. But these are not physical things. Science isn't, you're not going to clamp this machine in my head and, okay, here's what he's thinking kind of thing. So even, even to know that certain parts of your brain when they are when they light up you know for the machine when they're active um are represent or seem to correspond with certain mental states like thinking about food or thinking about sex or thinking about religion or something like that well you, the only way they know that is by the subject reporting it it's the guy on the inside <laughs> has got to tell what's going on on the inside that corresponds with what the scientists see on the outside. So anyway, uh, we live in, a, it seems so obvious to me, Sam, that we live in a world that is both matter, in, that are, that, in which you have material things and immaterial things, and we are directly in contact with each of those all the time, except for when we're unconscious, I guess, and then we might be dreaming. But it, and, and these things are obvious. Say again? That's very interesting. During our lecture today, he actually quoted Descartes, therefore, I think, therefore, I am. Uh -huh. And it coincides with what you said of, well, I'm thinking, therefore, I'm existing. But it seems like if he's a, taking a verificationist approach, you can't sort of affirm Descartes' quote with the scientific method, because it's it's more subjective of I know I am because I know I am. Well, that's right. Yeah, and by the way, subjective only in the sense that the information is, 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 has, let me back up, only in the sense that the subject is the one who has access to this information. It is not subjective in the sense that the, it's true because some subject believes it. In this particular case, an individual's awareness of his own existence of, of his thinking is proof of his existence. And this is obviously true. Yeah, I mean, wh he, who needs to do a scientific experiment to know that that's, that's legitimate? There it is. I mean, it's uh, no duh. I think, therefore I am. Or I have a, actually had a t-shirt once I saw in northern Wisconsin said, I fish, therefore I am. But you get the point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I don't, I, I, it's, if he brought that up in class today, I wasn't, I mean, Descartes tried to build a whole system of knowledge, of certainty, uh, from based on well, what can I be, uh, what, what what are what is something that I couldn't be mistaken about, and that's where he starts. With, I I think therefore I am, cogito ergo sum. But you know, I that's pretty obvious. Now building more on that, that's another project. 
and a lot of people think he ultimately failed in the broader project. But the starting point, who, how can how can that be taken exception with, right? It's just mm. obviously so. So, um, and our, the thinking, by the way, the thinking is not concrete if concrete means material. It's abstract if abstract means immaterial. That's what thoughts are. Thoughts aren't C fibers firing in your brain. That might be going on while I'm thinking, but that's not what a thought is. A thought has different qualities than the physical things that are going on in your brain.